that we thought it was a good idea to do this conference to foster the artificial intelligence ecosystem in Latin America and in Mexico, and in particular across two axes. One was trying to foster cooperation between academia, governments, and industry, and also across the other axis important to us, which was to make networks and interactions between groups located locally in Mexico and Latin America and those located abroad that were either doing studies or had projects relevant for the region. And last year was the first edition. It was extremely nice. And this year it grew quite considerably. For example, the summer school that we organized, uh, in this year it lasted three days. It had 17 parallel sessions, uh, uh, six, six parallel sessions and 17 professors. And it was so nice to see all the community and all the students being part of that. So, so there are many things going on. There were social events. Last year we had a, a thematic table sessions where students would, could talk with the professors on different topics. And, in, and this year we did a really amazing summer school, which consisted on courses taught uh, using Google's Code Lab and um, in different topics, going from like basic machine learning to super advanced neural networks in vision, in natural language, to other non-deep learning courses like uh, Bayesian inference, and that was part of it. And then there's the other part, which is the conference, where we really had the opportunity to have amazing speakers, like uh, Professor Joshua Benjo, who's one of the fathers of artificial intelligence, and many other professors that are Mexicans are not and are not located here who were supportive for this event and many other researchers and scientists. It's really a privilege to be able to have people as amazing as, as these speakers. And I think the community was extremely excited and that helped us a lot. So yesterday we were in a meeting with important people from the federal government. And because we were able to bring these people and they were nice enough to come with us and talk to them, now the actual, the Federal Council of Science and Technology in Mexico is being interested in putting money into this and developing pro projects like maybe creating a, an AI center. So it's, ex it's, it's really a privilege and an honor to be able to host these people. And I think the community is taking it extremely well. And looking into the f future, this will be very helpful. As we know, Latin America and Mexico are extremely unequal. And, the, and education reaches really differently the different social classes. So one of the things that we want is if artificial intelligence is going to continue to grow and increasingly be important towards the future, um, we want to make the whole population, not only the students that are privileged like me and had the opportunity to go to MIT and know about this, but also the big, uh, the, mo the biggest portion of the, of the population, which are all the students that do not have that privilege. And so part of our objective is to reach them, and that's why we were talking with the agency governments and telling how can we make this real. What we would like is to make to uh, make Latin America appear in the international landscape as a place where that's not lagging behind and that wants to be part of the conversations and of the exciting things that are happening around the topic. I think both things are very important. So we were talking yesterday and Joshua was telling us about his experience in Canada and critical mass is crucial because that builds an ecosystem and then academics are interested in being there professors that take sabbaticals go to that place, um, all the students want to be part of that, and then all the um, uh, enterprises and companies and projects start building around that and from that. So that's extremely important, and that's why we want to build, and, par and there's one panel in our conference about building an AI center in Latin America that, that tries to gather that ecosystem there. Again, c replicating what happened in Canada where some institutes formed, mer at the beginning it was a more academic uh, objective, so in Montreal and Toronto and Edmonton, and then all the big companies have opened their headquarters there, so Uber, Google, of course, Facebook, Twitter, all of them have opened offices there, so that's a very important part. And then, of course, especially for Latin America and Mexico that has such a diverse um, profile of people, uh, electronic courses and, and other ways of accessing. So we are recording all of our courses and putting them online and the conferences are available. And of course, all the online projects are a key part of the progress forward. RIA is part of a larger uh, number of efforts trying to, again, foster the ecosystem in Latin America and to place it in, in the international landscape. So one of the things that we've been trying to push forward is to bring one of the big international conferences to Mexico or Latin America, like ICLR, 
and we've been talking to the committee, and it seems likely or possible that in 2022 we could bring one of those conferences, which brings all the best academics and all the big companies. So that's that that would be a very nice thing to foster everything. The other thing that we that I mentioned is building an AI center that is really perceived as a prestigious place to do research and that the international community and all the Mexicans that right now are abroad, so like me that I'm at MIT and people that go to Google and all of my friends that have startups that are now happening in Canada, that they have an interest of coming here and doing it here and that would span all of that. So it's really a kind of like an effort in many fronts and, and those are some of the examples. Um, from my personal view, I believe artificial intelligence is really gonna grow even more than now in importance. And so I wanna be part of those conversations. I wanna be part of that. In fact, I was before doing another PhD, more like in economics and working on decision theory, but from the mathematical economic side. And when I realized of the importance of artificial intelligence and what's happening and the scientific importance of understanding the mind, I decided to transition and now I've been working in this field. I actually recently published a book called Genes versus Cultures versus Consciousness, a brief story of our computational minds, which you can buy in Amazon. And again, this is the space that I think is gonna be extremely important and might change our future and our society. And so my intuition is that the, the, the data has to be decentralized and one of the ways of uh, of trying to democratize and, and fight against the possible dangers that AI could bring is to make it as accessible to as many people as possible, both in the side of the algorithms and in the side of the data. Mm -hmm.